Hey guys, it's Izzy here and today we are going to be doing my March wrap up. So I'm going to be telling you all my thoughts on all of the books that I've read this month. Also, I will have my stats at the end of the video and it is the 18th when I'm filming this. So there is still over 10 days left of the month. So I am sure that I'm going to be reading more books, finishing more books. So be sure to subscribe to see my blogs because I will go into my thoughts of these books in those vlogs. Also, I will be writing reviews for these books on Goodreads and my blog. So for the books that aren't featured in this video, they will be featured in other videos and other locations across the internet. But let's get into this video. I did finish a book today and that is Upstream by Mary Oliver. This is an essay collection and yeah, I loved it. It was 3.5 with Call Pal, which doing Call Pal was kind of I wouldn't say I did call pal, but I rated each section and then did the average. And that that's how I do for my short story collections that necessarily don't have that many books in them or have that many stories in them. Because y'all know with the wilderness tells there were over 40 stories in that and yeah, that would be excessive. This felt like a four star for me. If you love literature, nature, and classic literature, you'll give this a five star. You'll give it a five star. And as I said, I give it a four star because I love literature and I love nature. So I love this book. But classic literature is not my strong point, especially the authors that were mentioned here. They were like Wordsworth, Poe, which yes, very popular authors. So that is on me for not knowing a ton. So I didn't really connect with that section. But this book felt so magical. Like when I was reading it, I had that feeling of like a kid on Christmas, you know, which is a feeling that I'm always looking for. That is the best feeling in the world. Just as butterflies like bubbling in your stomach. Oh my gosh. I guess it's a nostalgic feeling because as I said, it was like the magic of childhood that I felt reading this, of just being outside, that love of reading, that love of learning. I think this book really perfected that. And I think it's really good for spring and fall because those are the seasons that I feel the most nostalgic during and I've seen other people who feel the same way with those like transitional seasons so I do think this is the perfect time of year to pick up upstream if you are thinking about it. In March I did focus on reading historical fiction and one of those was The Queen's Fortune by Alison Pataki. So this is about Desiree who is a woman who we see her, she is the daughter of a merchant class family in post-revolution France. So we see her just, you know, as an innocent girl. Then she becomes a lover of Napoleon Bonaparte, so a very iconic person. He falls out of love with her and marries an older woman who Desiree then becomes a confidant of a lady of. And then Desiree goes and marries her ex's rival and the eventually becomes queen of Sweden. So she lived quite a life and to think I had never heard of her before. That's crazy. Like she did all of this. So I loved getting to see her journey from that teenage girl from just a rich family, like from a merchant family, not even nobility, going to be in a queen of a country she had never even been to before and hadn't really been heard of. So I loved seeing that. And then I loved the dynamics between her and Josephine. Yeah, just that political court intrigue and just drama. Yes, I love that kind of thing. And then I liked seeing Napoleon from an outsider perspective, seeing all these big events that Napoleon went through, but not from his perspective, from somebody who he meant a lot to. And did she mean a lot to him? I don't know. It was interesting to see what the people around him thought of him. It reminded me of the book Booth by Karen Joy Fowler, which is one of my favorite books. I think of that book all the time. Uh, we're seeing the a person who is very like infamous in history and seeing it through the people around them's perspective. I thought that was really cool. Atmosphere reminded me so much of The Count of Monte Cristo. The early parts did, at least. And that we see... Um, Alexander Dumas's father get mentioned and then eventually Alexander Dumas does get mentioned because this book goes like a 70 year time span. So I, I really liked that because The Count of Monte Cristo is one of my favorite classics. Such a good book. Highly recommend it. And I did not know a lot about this time period in history. I don't know a lot about Napoleon. I do plan on watching the Napoleon movie this week. So I didn't know a lot 
about what was going on. But the author put so much research into this book that I never felt lost or confused. And that was so great since I was going into this not knowing anything. I didn't even know the woman that this book was about. So the author did a fantastic job with that. But the thing that I didn't like is that this was very long. It just went on for too long. Also, I had stuff going on, like medical or dental stuff going on. So I took a lot of intermissions from this book where I didn't pick it up for a while. And that made me like, you know, get taken out of the story. So that is a me problem. So maybe if that didn't happen, I would have loved this book more. But that being said, I still gave this a five or no, five, sorry, I gave it a four star. I still really enjoyed this. I learned a lot. This was so informative. And I love this journey that we went on with Desiree. And again, I learned so much even about the Swedish royal family. Like I know who the current Swedish royals are, but I didn't realize they were descended from stuff that went on with Napoleon and from the French, yeah, French Revolution. Like all of that led to who we have in charge of Sweden today. Or not in charge, but you know what I mean the monarchs of Sweden. So I learned a ton, but I will be unhauling this because I did do the ebook and I know somebody would love to have a nice hardback edition of this book. Now we have a book that I did not love that much. It might be my least favorite book of the month and that is The Indigo Girl by Natasha Boyd. This is a local book for me where it takes place and I think the author might even be local, but it wasn't for me. <laughs> characters, Nat um, not Natasha, what is even Eliza Lucas. So this is based on a real woman again. I did not feel a strong connection to her at the start. I was like, she's fine. I don't really care. Then by the end, I hated her. And I saw a lot of people in a historical fiction Facebook group that I'm in love this book. One of their favorite books they gift it to people. And no, no, nobody saw what I saw wrong with it. There is this part, let me even go to it for y'all. So it's this far into it. And I thought that the slavery aspects as a associated place in the antebellum self, I thought they had been handled well until I got to the last third of this book and it went crazy. Okay, so Eliza is making indigo and the crop fells because that happens with farming. It's gonna happen. A slave gets, he says he does it. Ben, so that's the guy who is a slave. He's like, it's my fault. I messed it up. Yada, yada, yada. She's like, you betrayed me. She, she was like, you were closer to freedom than I was. Mind you, he is a slave and she is a white woman from a very rich, prominent Charleston family. I don't know. I think his the slave owner was saying that he would free Ben eventually or something. And Eliza, so she is trying to run this farm, this plantation on her own. And she's like, no, nobody's going to believe in me because you ruined my crop. I'm not going to be a strong, independent woman anymore. And I'm like, how can you compare that to the hardships of slavery. And these are real people and there is no fact that Eliza had like this relationship with a slave. There's no proof of that. So I do not get why this plot line was added to the story. I do not understand. I don't know how that made it through editing, especially her comparing, like even if her crop fells and this endeavor fells, she will still be a rich woman in Charleston going through the rich people lifestyle. Ben will still be a slave risk in his life every day. So I, do, I don't get it. I don't get how people were like, I even posted the screen a uh, picture of the page on Facebook and people were like, I don't get what you see wrong with this. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> but with this, I think the atmosphere was the big part. And I think the author just really wanted to write a book in Charleston in this time period. And I do think the author did a great job at um, setting the scene and making it very picturesque. The writing, um, was fine. I don't really remember anything too crazy about the writing. And then the plots, I was overall just bored. It sounds interesting on the back that because it's 
it sounds unbelievable that this girl is being left three plantations to run and she's only 16. Unheard of, but it's a true story. So, I mean, that does sound very intriguing, but on page, I was actually very bored with it. Now we have a book that I have been thinking about quite a bit, and that is Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. Lots of tabs, lots of tabs. And I very much enjoyed this. I gave it a four star again, so I loved it, but not a new favorite. I loved the characters. It very much reminded me of the book Betty by Tiffany McDaniel, just like all the family dynamics and following like, these children and then seeing them grow up. And yeah, I love that. But the story was really hard to follow. So I had a hard time truly connecting with the characters. So I couldn't give that character in the Culpal system a five star, but I did love them. and. Loved seeing them come of age. Atmosphere was definitely my favorite part. I love just that first half of the 20th century, especially in the UK. We see World War One, which is, or like kind of World War One, <laughs> which is one of my favorite parts in history to learn about. A lot of this is World War Two. I know World War Two is so overdone in historical fiction, but the way it was done here so unique and I've never read anything like it. But this is another book where the writing was the issue for me. I really struggled with following the flow of the story. I think it could have been edited and set up better but this was really gripping. It was medium paced. I did the audiobook. The writing was my main issue just because I didn't know what was real. I didn't know what was fake and it I a lot of people say it's repetitive which yes it is repetitive in a sense but that didn't bother me. But the ebb and flow, I really struggled with. So again, the plot, as I said, I don't know what was real. I don't know what was fake. And usually I would hate that. I hate open-ended stuff. But this just has me thinking so much, thinking of all different, different theories and just how some things in life were meant to happen. You can go through the life so many different times and just there's small instances that always happen and were meant to happen. I think that's very poetic and romantic. So I did love this. I have been thinking about it a ton. It's very much a thoughtful book that you're going to be thinking about. You're going to be reflecting. And yes, I highly recommend Life After Life. Now we have a mood read that I did and that is The Good Terrorist by Doris Lezine. This takes place again in England and London in the early to mid 1980s. This is following Alice, who is from a bourgeois background, but she is getting involved with the IRA. And she makes squats in different cities. She's in Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham, whatever, and now she's in London doing a squat. And the, these are homes that are meant to, where people are supposed to stay for a little bit before they join the IRA. And I really did like Alice. I felt for her through this and I, this was a great character study of seeing a woman come from that background and then being a part of like a terrorist organization. Crazy. This book all felt like a ticking time bomb because you just know something's going to happen and it's just like, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? This was so slow, even if it did feel like a ticking time bomb. I had to skim through it. I do think I would have a better experience if I did the audiobook, followed along with the audiobook, or even did the ebook. So I am going to keep this book at the moment. I, did, I gave it like a three, uh, some kind of three star. I think I would have had a better time if I followed along with the audiobook because it was just so long. Like, it's not even that long of a book, but I would just, my mind would wonder a lot, even though I did really find this character work and setting intriguing. Now we have The Lady of the Rivers by Philippa Gregory. This was my first Philippa Gregory book. So this is about Jaquetta of Luxembourg. This was again a book where we followed a woman from when she's a teenager to her older years. And I really loved seeing Jaquetta's journey because we first see her, yeah, she's this an innocent girl in a noble family. She gets married to an older man and is very much objectified by him, but not in the traditional sense. But he doesn't really love her and she is a young girl. She wants to fall in love. She wants to have that story like she hears of the knights and the damsels in distress, you know, that kind of story. And eventually we do see her become a lover. We see her become a woman of her own, again, a confidant of a queen. And even the mother of a queen, grandmother of a queen, great-grandmother of a king, and it goes on and on. And I loved getting to see that character journey. 
The atmosphere was my favorite part. It was so fairy tale esque It felt magical. And there was a lot of magic, like astrology and that kind of thing thrown in, alchemy, that I thought was very fascinating. I know a lot of people don't like that with Philippa Gregory's book, but I, books, but I think it makes sense because Jaquetta of Luxembourg was eventually accused of bewitching Edward IV to fall in love with her daughter Elizabeth. I think it's realistic that she would have some kind of background of knowing about alchemy and witchcraft. Writing is where I struggle so much with books. So the first like two thirds of the book was fine. It was medium pace and the words on the page were fine. But at the like last third of the book just got repetitive and slow and I was wanting it to end so bad and I mean it did eventually end. So the plot was great because we see this woman who has often been overlooked by history but she's around so many influential people and obviously had to have an influence on their lives. So I really like to see just how this one woman, how we see her whole life pretty much and see the influence that she had on the people around her and the influence they had on her and I gave this one a four out of five. Lastly, we have Annapolis by William Martin. Again, another historical fiction, a big one. I think this might be the biggest book that I read this month. But we're going to start with the characters as we always do. These characters, this author just wanted to write about a lot of historical events and the characters were there for the sake of having characters because he wanted to write about historical events. Yeah, so not a strong connection to them whatsoever. But I do think the setting of Annapolis was very strong. I've only been to Annapolis like once, but I have been to a lot of other parts of Maryland. And I do think the author did a fantastic job. You could picture the shores of the Chesapeake Bay. Perfect. The writing was fine. I liked that we had two timelines, more historical and then the more contemporary. I liked that the historical was the writing. Like uh, one of the characters in the modern timeline is writing a book and we're re reading his book that is a historical book all about his family. And I thought that was a very unique way to go about this. It did feel episodic, which didn't really hinder my reading experience. But just to warn y'all that it is a bit episodic on the writing. The plot was pretty much what I enjoyed the most because as I said, the characters were there for the sake of having characters. But I learned so much from this book. So many more forgotten parts of American history with the US Navy. Like I did not know about the wars with the Barbary Pirates, um, even parts of the War of 1812 and like the Spanish-American War. I knew nothing about any of that. So I did learn quite a bit. There were some wars still forgotten like World War I and the Korean War which are you know my hot topics. I learned a lot and that is always the goal from my reading experiences. Let's look at my stats now. So we will be going to story graph and again this will change because I do plan on reading more books this month but we are going to look at the month of March. And here we go. So I read seven books, which is 3,325 pages. I know quite a few of these were chunky books. And then my moods that I read the most of were informative, which yes, I did learn a ton this month. Then emotional and reflective or pace. 28% have been, or 29% have been medium paced with 71% being slow. I've definitely talked about the books being slow pace. Y'all know I struggle with that and I, I don't like slow pace. For page number, 43% of the books have been over 500 pages when 14% have been less than 300 and 43% have been 300 to 499, which to me is like the average length of most books. As for fiction versus nonfiction, I've read 14% nonfiction and 86% fiction. Let's look at the genres now. So y'all know, as I said, I am focusing on historical this month. So I read five historical books, three literary, two romance, one nature, one politics, and one essays. And for a format, I've read 1,370 pages and I've listened to 60.3 hours. I have listened to a lot of audiobooks this month. That is my goal just to alternate each month which one I have I read more of. So 43% have been print when for another 43% have been audio and 14% have been digital. And then all of the books have been in English because that is the only language I trust myself to read in. And then my average rating has been a 3.43 
So the majority of the books I've rated 3.5. So by this, my least favorite this month has been The Indigo Girl at three stars. And my highest rated book has been The Lady of the Rivers, which I gave a four star. So I mean, not even a huge jump. So it has not been a bad reading month at all. And then again, I've read 3,325 pages. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way through, leave a bunny emoji in the comments below. And as always, comment, rate, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell to be notified when all my videos go live. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!